This is the biggest story going on in the country right now. And when you went on big story coverage, you go to Leland Vittert. He's the host of On Balance, and he interviewed former President Trump's attorney. He joins us now. There's a 3 p.m. Eastern deadline today for Trump's legal team to respond to the DOJ's request to unseal that warrant. And here's what his attorney, Christina Bob, told you last night. There's absolutely nothing preventing you guys from releasing it, though. Other than decorum, I mean, we're trying to work well with the Department of Justice. We've been cooperative this entire time, and we'd like to remain cooperative. And we have reached out to them and are waiting to hear back. So, Leland, thank you again for joining us. My first question is, they say they're cooperating. The Department of Justice says we had to serve this search warrant. There's a disconnect there. Is decorum the word for that disconnect? <laughs> that seems like an odd choice of words. There's a lot of disconnects, Mitch, and I think Joe was re very uh, right to point out that uh, Team Trump could release this information uh, within the hour if if they wanted to. Um, it, just as a, a, a note, uh, President Trump now, uh, just in the past hour, has said the nuclear weapons issue is a hoax, just like Russia collusion was a hoax, the Mueller investigation was a hoax, and went on to talk about uh, Crossfire Hurricane, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok and uh, the Steele dossier, the list continues. I think one of the real problems here is, is that there's very real reasons to be suspicious of the credibility and uh, the genuineness, shall we say, or the candidness of both sides in this situation. So, uh, you know, the team Trump is hiding behind this idea of decorum and we're going to try to work with the Justice Department. They could have released the warrant and uh, the receipt of service, which is the, the evidence list of what the FBI served uh, on Monday afternoon when the FBI left, because they had those things in their possession. At the same time, you have Merrick Garland get up and say, hey, look, we, you know, we, we want to release this, and we think this is important to show the American public uh, what this is and uh, the basis for our investigation and on and on and on. But the one thing he didn't say is we're keeping under seal the affidavit that was used to get the search warrant. They're not going to release that under any condition. That would actually show us and tell us what exactly uh, the FBI went to this judge with and said, hey, judge, this is why we need to raid Mar-a-Lago. Uh, so the, the Justice Department is making it appear as though, oh, yes, we're, we're very interested in transparency and keeping that private, too. Um, so uh, both sides appear to be acting solely in what is their perceived best interest um, from a political conversation, whether that's the best interest of the United States and of, of the citizens, to be well informed, you make your own decision. And you asked Christina Bob last night if she thought anyone in Trump world was happy that this had happened because this would be something that they can use for momentum and to appeal to their base. She thought that was a ridiculous question. She was like, they raided his house. Why would you be happy about that? But he is buck raking off of this. He's fundraising off of this. So are folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Andy Biggs. And so my question goes to you. Do you believe that or do you think that there are some people in Trump world that are happy that this happened because it gives them something to campaign on. I, th I think anyone can be the ju judge themselves on that question, on that question. And you can and see the response. Um, you know, President Trump is now on the front page of every newspaper once again. Uh, he is uh, the lead of every television program once again. Uh, he's suddenly relevant uh, again in a way that he wasn't a, a week ago. The other thing that this has changed the dynamic on is you go back to 2016 and President Trump would say, I am persecuted. I am being called a racist because I'm talking about everyday common man issues and I want to build a wall to keep immigrants out. He was being persecuted because he was standing up for the little guy as the billionaire. Take it to pass the 2020 election. He became the billionaire who wanted everybody else to deal with his grievances and care about his grievance, which was the 2020 election. You don't win elections by having people care about your grievances. You win elections by you caring about their grievances. And this has the ability, uh, th this issue of the FBI going after him, to tap once again into uh, the grievances of the masses, right? That people feel as though uh, the government has uh, has gotten too big, its overreach is too strong, uh, it is, uh, the government is being uh, too difficult and too involved uh, in the common man's life. And this allows him to campaign off of that issue and once again uh, take over the mantle that he had in 2016.
But it still remains to be seen if he will be campaigning for 2024 <laughs> and running for president. He has not said he's going to do that yet, but uh, I think we both have a secret okay. suspicion that it's going to happen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.